Hey everybody, it's Lon Seib, and I've got a really funky keyboard to take a look at today. This is the Epo Maker RT100. It looks like it's something straight out of an 80s workstation, but it is a modern mechanical keyboard with a pretty cool switch mechanism and this rather interesting, if not gimmicky, display that's attached to it. And in this video, we're going to take a closer look at this keyboard and see what it's all about. But before we do that, I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this came in free of charge from Epo Maker. However, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, nor is anyone reviewing or approving what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this keyboard is all about. Now, the price point on this is $106. And what you get in the box is the display, the keyboard, a pretty nice USB-C cable, which will go to USB-A on the other end. You also get a dongle here for connecting wirelessly because this is a wireless keyboard. So you can use the dongle and go over 2.4 gigahertz or you can use Bluetooth. You can of course plug it in directly like I am doing here with the included cable. And they also give you a switch and key puller tool as well. Now Epo Maker is a manufacturer of key switches and this keyboard uses their sea salt silent switches, say that three times fast, and they really are silent, have a listen. So you've got that mechanical feel, but you don't get the loud clicking sound. So if you're in an office where people are sensitive to key clicks, this keyboard might uh, be acceptable to your coworkers. You can swap out the key switches if you want, along with the key caps, but this is what you're gonna get uh, when you take it out of the box. The travel on the keys is four millimeters, and two millimeters of that is the pre-travel. So it's got a very deep uh, travel here to the keys. It feels really good, actually. It reminds me a lot of the 80s keyboards I think this is kind of replicating, but you don't get that heavy metal feel to it. In fact, most of this keyboard is made out of plastic. You can get a look at the key switch here. I did some B-roll a little bit earlier. This is a backlit keyboard and the light will come through that switch. Unfortunately though, the keys are not translucent. They're all opaque. So when you have the keyboard under dark lighting, you can't really see all that much. So I wasn't impressed with the backlighting feature. I'll show you the software where you can configure the backlight in a little bit, but I would not buy this for its backlight. It's not very good. Now, although it is made out of plastic, it's got a very nice sturdy feel to it. It's got some weight to it as well. It doesn't slide around all that much on my desk. And I've actually enjoyed typing on this quite a bit. I've been using this throughout the last couple of days and it's very comfortable and a really nice typing keyboard. It is though, as you can see, compact. So you do get your full number pad here, but the zero key is a little smaller than I would like. They also had to move some things around. So your page up and page down keys are over here, but it does work for the most part. And if you like having the full keyboard layout here in a smaller package, uh, this will certainly get you there. There is a knob here for volume control. If you push it down, it will play and pause the content that you're playing back. Uh, this will work with Windows and the Mac, and there's a switch here to determine what the special keys do. So right now I've got it hooked up to my PC, so I have it in PC mode. The other switch here is for enabling the wireless functionality, and if you switch it to on here, it'll disable the USB port as a means of getting the uh, keyboard input to the computer and switch over to the wireless side of things. As I mentioned before, it's got a USB-C connector here on the back for attaching a keyboard or for charging it. There's another USB-C connector here for the display, which I'll go over in a minute. And this also doubles as a garage for the USB adapter for 2.4 gigahertz, but you can't garage the adapter and use the display here. It is one or the other. Now you've got some feet on the back here if you want to prop the keyboard up a little bit on your desk and there are two positions. What's nice is that both positions have a rubber foot so it won't slide around when you have these things deployed. And all in, it really is a very nice solid typing experience. Now though, let's move on to the display which I mentioned at the beginning is kind of a gimmick. And I'll load up the software here and show you what that does. So here is the software, and as software goes, this is not the most intuitive way to control a keyboard, but you can go in and change what each of these keys do. Additionally, you can set macros when you push down the function key and have those keys do something different. 
I found the macro programming to be very difficult. It's not as robust as what you might see on a Logitech keyboard or on the Razer keyboards where you can easily figure out what you're doing here. This is much more difficult to put a macro together. So for example, if you wanted to add a string of text, I found that it was actually really hard to figure out exactly how to do that on here. So what you do is you kind of create a macro, you go in and add, your decision point here is to add a key, and if I wanted to write out my name, for example, I have to basically have it program the entire uh, set of pushing the key down, lifting the key up, putting another key in. It can take forever, I think, to program in one of these things. Now, as far as the display is concerned, uh, what you can do with that here is go into sketchpad mode. And as you can see, I drew a little drawing here, and I'll maybe put a big uh, circle on here as well. And if you are wired in, you can upload your drawing to the display and actually create animations if you wanted to as well. So you can see here, I just hit the upload button. That's going to replace what I had in there uh, with my uh, horrible drawing here. And I can also though upload GIFs. And that's what I did before to get my logo on here. So as a fun experiment, I'm going to drag in this GIF image I downloaded earlier, a little Star Wars theme. And as you can see, the program detected all of the frames in that GIF and has separated them out. And now if I go to upload GIF, what will happen is I will get this animation delivered to my display. And what's funny is it doesn't take all that much longer than that single frame we looked at a minute ago. So we'll wait here for a second. And once it gets uploaded, uh, that will go into the keyboard. And now I've got this cool X-Wing animation on the display here. And that's about the only thing you can impact with the editor is just this little box here on the uh, left-hand side of the screen. On the right-hand side of the screen, it'll tell you how it's currently connected, the status of the battery, the CPU temperature, if your computer supports sending that information along, along with your current CPU utilization. Now, if you don't want to leave the software open all the time, the only way that you can get that information over to the keyboard is to give it administrative access and run something in the background. Not something I would recommend doing, but if you wanted to have it continuously upload the information while the software is running, you click on the upload button here, and that will give you kind of a real-time look as to your utilization. But you can't customize any of this. So that is why I found this display to be more of a gimmick than something useful. It has very limited utility, but perhaps somebody out there might find it of interest. Although I really would have liked to have seen this keyboard available without the display, perhaps for a lower price. Now I was able to customize the knob here on the side. So as you can see, you can change what happens when you push it and also what happens when you turn it right or left. And what I did here is turned off the volume command and have it work as a mouse wheel when I twist it. So if we go over to my blog here and I turn the wheel, uh, you can see once I get everything into position here that it's now scrolling my web page here as opposed to turning the volume on and off. So there's some things you can do here with the software that are pretty neat. It also retains these settings when you move it from one machine to another. So that's pretty helpful. But again, the software isn't all that intuitive. Now I did find you could very easily share the keyboard with two computers just by using the on off switch here. So when it's off, it's in USB mode. When it's on, it's in wireless mode. So you could have the keyboard hardwired to your desktop. And then if your laptop makes its way over to the desk, you can just flick it on. It will disconnect from the desktop and connect wirelessly to the laptop. And then when you switch it off, it'll go back to the desktop computer. So overall, I found this to be an excellent keyboard. I really like these sea salt switches. They are incredibly quiet, yet you get that mechanical feel and deep travel. And it just feels great to type on this thing, especially because it doesn't make any noise when you're doing it. And if you're looking for really quiet mechanical switches, uh, these sea salt switches are definitely something to look at, either on this keyboard or perhaps on another keyboard that you put together yourself or modify yourself. The display here is cool, but completely unnecessary, and it adds cost. And I suspect that they put this thing on here to make this keyboard stand out in a very crowded marketplace. And it's unfortunate because it does add cost, and they didn't need to put it on here because the keyboard's great as it is. 
I do wish the backlight was a little better on it. It doesn't really do much for you um, because the keys are opaque, but it is there and you can light it up. You'll just want to go into the software or use the keyboard's function commands to find a color that works best for you. And overall, not a bad deal here, but I think it could have been less expensive without all the bells and whistles. That's going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Brian Parker, Chris Allegretta, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Logic AGR, Tom Albrecht, and I'm the Brown. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.